Hello everyone, welcome to a summary of the last stream, stream 31. Stream 31, to the moon! We made it to the moon, we got to the moon. What a story we have about getting to the moon. First of all, we sent Lawrence up first because who else, right? Lawrence has to go first, this is a pioneering thing. Lawrence has never played Minecraft before to any real extent. Certainly not to this extent, so it felt correct to make him the guinea pig. So if anything was going to go wrong, it would happen to him first, and then we couldn't be blamed. Once we got to the moon, though, <clears throat> well, first, look. So we had all this gear on. Here's all our gear. Um, frequency module, so that we can hear stuff, apparently, on the moon. I, if, don't, again, there's an oxygen mask. We need that, because there's no oxygen on the moon. And then a parachute. Things happened. Uh, you can see the stream footage as I add it in. Um, <clears throat> when you come down on the moon, you're coming down in this giant lander thingy. So you go up in a rocket, which is basically the size of a bean can. And then you come down on this thing, which is at least twice the size of that, in which your rocket can be found. And the landing pad that you left with, we didn't realize this. So we had to make a whole bunch more landing pads. It's a rocket each and a landing pad each. We figured that out quickly. We've got the oxygen gear, got the oxygen masks. Uh, these two things, let me uh, nip across, uh, they're not in my backpack because they're empty or they were, I uh, apologise for the lag, but not very much. Uh, look, Nakwadar, Nakwadar alloy ingots, that's basically why we went, there is Nakwadar on the moon. Nakwadar, we learned, um, is the, I would say element, but it's the material from Stargate. We did find a Stargate, if you recall, many, many moons ago. Will you let me go through the thing for me? Um, we learned, uh, we found a Stargate. So now we've got the stuff we need to uh, power them or make them, I forget. But in here is where you put your uh, oxygen tanks in order to be refilled by the oxygen compressor. Once it is full, it pops out in here. So two heavy oxygen tanks go on my back. Now these lasted <coughs> almost long enough. <coughs> Excuse me for all the coughing. You'll have to uh, just turn your machine down, your computer down. Um, almost long enough. Lawrence found one of them dropped, uh, an extra one dropped from uh, an enemy on the moon. So Lawrence got a little bit of extra time, but we all ended up losing our heads by the end of it, but we'll get there. Before that, we went running around looking for various things. We found Daquita, as noted. We found cheese, because of course. We found villagers. And there are special emerald equivalents on the moon, which can be traded with moon villagers who get moon things. We spent quite some time looking for what is supposed to be not that hard to find, which is a big hole in the ground. And when we got there, we discovered it looked just like a big hole in the ground. And so we went down it. When we got down it, we found a maze of twisty passages is all alike and then we found a giant skeleton thing which was a very big scary moon boss which took no time at all to defeat and was not a threat at all in order to get the thingy that we were looking for because uh, <clears throat> if you remember last time i was going through all of these dang things trying to you know get all the what have yous and hujma bobs this one we needed this the elite crafting the passage package recipe encoder we needed that the access card tier two is a compactor with a NASA workbench schematic and you get eight of these for that. We found something else in our chest, so then we had to go searching for all the things to trade the villagers, the moon villagers, so that we could get this out of that. All of this cost us time and oxygen, so by the time it was time to go home, we were all losing our heads and no one was listening to each other, as usual for our stream. So all you had to do was put down the launch pad in the right place and take off. Now the trouble is, your rocket doesn't have the fuel in it. You have to put your refueler down next to the launch pad. Tristan will probably explain in a comment because I still don't understand it. Because um, <clears throat> well, what was really confusing me is that things kept saying they had fuel in them and then the fuel would go away. Now, potentially Tristan had been picking up that fuel, but Tristan wasn't always next to me, so I did wonder where it would all go. Um, we did make the NASA workbench, as you can see here, so you can make a rocket. I assume this is now craft. This is auto craftable, maybe, so you can put everything in there and make the rocket. I don't know. We'll find out in the next stream. But going back to it, the fuel has to be in the rocket, or you can't take off. 
maybe that's obvious to you. It, looking back, yeah, we did. I didn't know that because I assumed that it would already be in the rocket because I landed the rocket with fuel in it. Why did the fuel come out? I didn't ask it to do that. So you have to make a thing, and they have to put the fuel back in it, and then you need the power. But Tristan had brought the stuff with him. That was fine. But there was a certain bit of palaver with whose rocket is that and who's getting in it, right? It should you think it'd be easy, right? You go and get nine launch pad bits. You get a rocket. You put the rocket on the launch pad. You get in the rocket and you go when it's got fuel in it. Easy peasy. Except somehow some of us managed to pick up the wrong rocket and get in it. Is it your turn? Is it my turn? Just get in the rocket and go. All of this culminated in some unfortunately unrecorded shenanigans wherein Mike, in his infinite wisdom, got out of the rocket when it was in the air. <laughs> you silly boy. In order to return uh, his launch pads, which he'd taken off with, to the to, to us down on the moon. Not realising, had he, that I already had them, Mike. They'd already shown up, but everyone was shouting across the top of each other and no one heard me, so that's on them. And Mike ended up stranded on the moon, except he didn't. He attached himself to Tristan's rocket with his trusty hook whoop, and piggybacked on the And somehow that worked. I don't know how, but it did. So there was Mike clinging to the side of a rocket, off up into the atmosphere, spacesuit on, of course, presumably completely unaffected by the propulsion, the fire spewing out the bottom of it. Anyway, everyone landed back on the, on the overworld safely. Before we ran out of oxygen, here we are again. We have Naquadar, we have this and that and the other, and there in my inventory are all the bits that I was going to use to make this thing, if you recall. There is a machine. This is the machine you want to use so that you can automate heavy duty plates, which we couldn't last time. It requires a Naquadar alloy block. Solved. Brilliant. Solid meteoric iron. We found meteors on the moon. Solved. Empowered emeratic crystal block. Solved. La di da di da. What don't I have? That's right. There is one of these that I don't have. And I believe it is the. Which one don't I have? One of these I don't have. Got that, got that, got that, got that, got that, got that. Fluid, reinforced, reinforced, normal energy hat, rolling machine. It's probably machine circuitry. Yes, of course. Machine circuitry, which is actually here, so I probably could have guessed. Which needs that, which needs that. There are many, many tiers of memory and other things between me and tier 3.5. As you can see, when I, if you notice when I started up, I have... Two encoded patterns for microchip tier two. I feel like I have uh, accidentally duplicated. But this I was preparing at the end of last stream to put in a carpenter, but it was very late and I won't do it to bed. <laughs> so I have yet to complete this automation. The reason I'm using automation is that undoubtedly we will need to do this thing again. And honestly, it's often a lot easier to the crafting recipe in the machine, tell it how to do the thing. When it's a, a, um, a carpenter recipe, that's not so true um, because it, it's a bit more set up. But a lot of, if it's just put it in the crafting tree, for example, you tell the thing how to make it and then you ask it how to make it and it'll tell you why it can't. Whereas if you're trying to make it in the crafting table, you go, right, I've got that thing, I've got that thing, I've got that thing, oh, I need that thing, how do I make that, oh, I need to make that, oh, I need to... Just automate everything, press go, and it'll say you need more of these. And that is a great way for me to sort of dig down into a massive recipe and just deal with everything. Like, you can see what deep prerequisites you don't have, and it's very, very helpful. So this one uh, requires a, I believe, a super glue a carpenter, of which we have many. Unfortunately... This has eight channels, and this has eight channels, and this has eight channels, and I couldn't really be bothered figuring out how to put another eight channels up at the top, even though I probably could, because this one has 24 in it, um, which is that lime cable there. And I think the lime cable at this end is also suitably capable of carrying... Yeah, it's only got 24. So this entire <laughs> that single cable is doing all of these carpenters, and still I need more. So I can put another sort of row here, and I thought maybe I'll just put another few 
the, on the ceiling, basically. Uh, this is getting a bit messy. I would like to move all these, but that seems like a lot of work, and I can't be bothered. So that's in my to-do list. But also you'll notice these things. Remember these? The packager and unpackages, which I was clicking through just now. These are now basically within our grasp, I believe. This ME packaging component is a packaging component, which is an eye vendor. Right? So these are not significantly that more difficult. One of these is very difficult. Um, and I forget which one it is. It's this one. We needed the access card tier two. Um, and then hopefully next time in the next stream, I'll be able to show you, or at least experiment with how this works. Because as far as I remember, packaged auto is how you make uh, ME recipes that can do more than a three by three without all the hacks that we've got in the background. Uh, packaged auto. Because um, look, there's a combination. Package X crafting is in here. So you've actually got the advanced package crafting. So these are crafting tables. Yeah. But automated. It's the automation interface and the crafting table together. So what you, I think what you do is you plonk an unpackager on top of one of these. And with a packager and a package, uh, an ender package crafting. Um, package recipe encoder. So you package recipe encoder can basically use grids this big and you use these to say how much you need the recipe for this it's just three black patterns right so you can basically it's, it's just saying look you, it costs you the same 9 18 27 right now you can have 27 items in it to get one of those anyway we'll see how that works later but it means we can get rid of a lot of these we don't need all this uh, interfaces, uh, all, the, all this flux duct stuff. We don't need the item ducts to pull things out of here. You know, we don't need to teach it the rest of We can basically forget all this, re-encode these, cram this place a little bit more full, uh, and that should be grand. So, and luckily, I think we only need one of these. <laughs> nope, I think we only need one of these. Yes, you do. Because this is the equivalent of the pattern terminal. You only need one. So we only need Brilliant. Looking forward to that. Uh, other people have also been to the moon, believe it or not. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at what people did, and when we got back to the moon, it's like, what should we do? <laughs> not a lot uh, back on the moon, I should say. It's, uh, not a lot to do. I was over here in the kitchen trying to make more food. You see how many? I've only got three hearts to win now. Still a lot. Of, still 150 more different types of food. Um, but I was over here, and look at all these. So I was connecting up all this stuff, and I gave up on this as well because it was really annoying. Oh, you're not supposed to be connected anymore, actually. See, so device missing channels. So here, I've got four of eight channels. Down there, look. That that cable there. That, that, that cable... What are you standing on? That cable there. Five of eight channels. But there's two more things missing a channel. I don't know why. It can't cope with these... I don't understand. Anyway, I've got all these things on because I wanted a storage bus to put things in here to store the food and stuff. <laughs> but I, I couldn't limit it because this can only have as many as you put in a capacity card. Right? It's got two rows at first and a capacity card gives you one more row per card. But even then, there's so many things in here that I've needed two storage buses already just to cope with things in this one. And this can hold two pages of stuff. And there's even more stuff in this one. Yeah, exactly. I gave up. Because I wanted to be able to auto-craft some food. One thing we might want to be able to want to consider doing is uh, having a separate ME system just for food. And you come over here and you say, you know, you basically order from the kitchen. Say, give me some food and it'll go around and do everything. Because that way only food can go in these things and you can't really get it wrong. Um, and what you can do is you can you know, force these things to contain stuff and then everything else will default to these or something like that, right? It would it, it, work. I think there's just too many things. You can't even do draws because there's so many things. Right? Uh, what, a, what a palaver. Anyway. <clears throat> I want to automate the kitchen. That seems very difficult, so therefore it's a challenge, so therefore it's difficult, so therefore it's a challenge. I want to automate everything that I was doing over there to try and make all those machines easier to make. I want to try and also re automate those big crafts so that I can stop using the semi-automatic crafting. 
generally there's a lot to do and a lot of it is automation and I'm looking forward to trying. Otherwise, don't really have much to say. We went to the moon, we came back, we bumbled about a bit and we stopped playing. This next time, Lawrence is likely to play. After that, probably not. So I will continue playing. So uh, do continue watching this video on my stream. But Lawrence is, is going to be uh, ending so that he can do other stuff. As is his right. You know, he can do what he wants. But uh, that means someone's going to have to take over all the magic and stuff like that. No, of course, no. <laughs> Lawrence has got a lot of uh, life points in his soul network, and nobody else does. So that'll be fun. <coughs> oh, also, the, the zombie died. I think when we all went to the moon, we had a permanent zombie, do you remember? It was constantly healing itself. Uh, it's not there anymore. That's a shame. So, thanks for watching. Hope you'll join me on the stream to do some more of the... Uh, stuff the cool stuff and maybe we'll go back to the moon maybe we'll go back to a different go back to maybe we'll go and find a different planet take everyone with us uh, and mike can hitch a ride <laughs> on someone else's rocket maybe we can hitch a ride on the way maybe we do only need one rocket we're just all attached to it we should try that anyway thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed i hope you'll check out Lawrence's video i hope i'll see you on the stream and i hope you'll join me next time for the next summary but until then thanks for watching and i'll see you